is Dates and Mates with your host, Damona Hoffman. Hello, lovers. Welcome to Dates and Mates, where we make modern love simple for you. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be difficult, even though you may be dealing with a lot of societal pressures and challenges in your relationship that uh, are making it a little bit more difficult to navigate in today's world. So today, we will be talking with my dear friend, Monique DeBose, who's going to be talking about interracial relationships. I can't believe I I stumbled over that because it's one of my favorite topics ever. (laughs) For obvious reasons. Yeah, near and dear to your heart. (laughs) It's near and dear to my heart. But she has a new show that's really breaking down boundaries and making people think. It's called Mulatto Math, Summing Up the Race Equation in America. So she is just the person to be here in studio talking with me about interracial relationships. But of course, we also have headlines for you like... Do swiping rewards outweigh the risk? And of course, we have to talk about the Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan Tatum split. Oh my God, people. Is love really dead? They say love is dead. That's in all the headlines about it. Love I guess is dead. That was it. We'll That's tell you it. why. Yeah. But some breaking news just hit the presses yeah. as to what the s- secret reason behind we were the split was. Gasping might be. in studio as we discovered. <gasps> we gasped. <laughs> and you will gasp in yeah. just a moment. And also, we'll discuss the secret factor that can predict the success of your relationship. Uh huh. It's not what you think it is. Plus, we have questions from you all in Technically Dating. We'll be talking about what to do if you've been chatting with a guy and it's been about six months and you think it should be moving faster than it is, but he's not ready to commit. And also how to handle the major crush you have on your childhood friend when you and him both already have other booze. So it's going to get very heated. <laughs> but a hot one. It's, got, it's a hot one, but it always starts off really hot and furious with the dish. D's dating dish. Do swiping rewards outweigh the risks? Well, the uh, the latest study said, uh, of course, the Pew Research Center, mm. like my favorite. How do I get a job at the Pew Research Center? Because yeah. that's really how I'm trying to live my life. That's true. You love your stats. I love my stats. But uh, they said that 45% of those who met online using dating apps believe it's more dangerous than meeting people through traditional methods and we know now like most people are really using dating apps they said 15 percent of adults in the u.s i beg to differ it's more i mean they're saying of all adults but more than half of single people have used dating apps i think it's more than that even yeah yeah, yeah. but okay people are still a little bit nervous to Mm -hmm. to admit it and the reason why is because we read all these headlines about people who were taken advantage of online or the little old lady who who gave her heart to this man. There's lots of alarmist reporting about dating apps, I think. There's alarmist reporting, but there are, there is real data mm-hmm. to support that crime is, is up. Uh, rapes were up from 5% from 2015 to 2016. And it's it's actually 12 percent up since 2012. So if you really look at, well, what has changed in Mm -hmm. that amount of time, it's online dating apps became more popular. Mm -hmm. But I would say, is it about the app or is it about people are dating more in general? And so it's it's just increasing the frequency of people having dates and those predators are able to find more more victims. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I hate headlines like this because it makes people think, well, I shouldn't go online mm. because because then I will be one of the statistics I will be taken advantage of. And if you really look at it, statistically speaking, you are much less likely to be to be taken. Mm-hmm. In, you're, you're it's most likely safe yes, for you. Yeah. But there are certain rules and all of the all of the dating sites and dating apps have rules and tips on how to stay safe Mm. with online dating obviously you want to meet somewhere 
in a public place that you're familiar mm-hmm. with. You don't want to get in a car with people that you don't, don't know. know. You want to do some research on who they are and make sure you let people know who you're going yeah, out where with. Where you'll be. Yeah. And I I this is the this is the little said rule mm-hmm. that I think really would would help a lot of a lot of women protect themselves from assaults is don't go to a second location on your mm. first date. Period. All the time people will say, oh, well, we had a good dinner and then we went to drinks. And then that's usually when you kind of picks up steam. Yeah. And when you have more drinks, then Mm. you're able to really think fully clearly. Don't go to his apartment Mm. on the first date. Don't don't put your don't put yourself in a situation where you are not you are not in 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 control control of the situation or there isn't someone around that can help you Mm -hmm. with a stranger. And I mean, this, these are rules like my mama taught me, Mm -hmm. but this is something that I've been saying just for the date to be successful. Right. Because you also are wearing out your welcome on that first date. So you want to give, give it a little bit more time to develop, even if you really like Mm -hmm. the person. So my vote is online dating apps still online dating apps, still mostly safe. Yeah. However, do be cautious and and also, if something happens, please, please report it. do report yeah. it to the site because they will take action. Mm-hmm. And and dating apps really take take uh, people abusing the system and and sexual assault and all of that very seriously. seriously. OK, it's a serious start to the show. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and with another serious story, uh, Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan Splitsville. I know you heard it before. Mm. But d- you didn't hear the real reason, right? No, I did not. Okay, so e- they they did the right thing at the beginning of the week. They're like, well, it's just it's an amicable week. split. We just decided we're just going our separate ways. Everybody cried, emoji yeah. tears, because they're like, love is dead. What happened to Jenna and Channing? And this is the, the couple that we really wanted to make it. But there's always a story behind the story. Mm. And I think Jenna just got tired of people being like, so really, girl, what, what is it? Really? Yeah. So she came out today Mm -hmm. saying that Channing's drinking definitely had an impact on the breakup. And this made me sad because this is something that I think a lot of couples deal with. And Channing was actually quoted in an interview saying that basically she signed up for this. Like she knew that I'm a partier and I'm a drinker and and that's what she gets. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, dude, Channing you're you're a dad yeah you're a you're a professional you're an actor you're a producer get your life together dude yeah especially now that it's been aired like his dirty laundry has been aired i'm sure he will uh maybe have a rehab he'll go to rehab and then but really (laughs) one of the cushy uh calabasas rehab and i'm not trying to like i'm not trying to play down the seriousness Mm. of having an addiction Mm. but if if Losing your wife isn't the catalyst right. to get that yourself clean. That seems like rock clean. bottom. Losing your wife of nine years. Like hopefully he will. Uh, he will grow from I know, this. I know, but I'm sad. They were so cute, but love will live on again. Yeah. You know, one way to make love live on, <laughs> producer Thomas. I liked this story. This was it's, a good one. It's uh, related to a a chore that mm. you should be doing around the house. You see, Esquire dot com said that doing the dishes. Is uh, is the is the thing that really separates the men from the boys. And if guys are not doing the dishes, if you're not splitting up their responsibilities, the likelihood of your relationship breaking up goes yeah. through the roof. So uh, I, what, what do you think about this one? Are you a dish doer? I yes, I did have to, my I did have to be uh, pushed into that position but i <laughs> <laughs> i am now a an ardent dish doer <laughs> um but yeah no it's it's important to split the duties nobody likes doing them i thought they made some interesting points how nobody compliments you for doing the dishes i thought that that was a good point how they not said true in, the in my household oh really you, you i in my house the back <laughs> i do i do like, if i do anything around the yeah, house yeah, 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 my yeah. husband is like yay <laughs> good for you you went potty right. yay no uh we used to split up uh-huh. all of the the responsibilities because it turned out the chores that we hated were the ones that the other person didn't mind doing so i actually oh, don't convenient. mind doing the dishes yeah but i hate doing the laundry okay and my husband likes doing the laundry but hates doing, doing the, the dish. dishes so it worked out but then when you have kids, there's just more dishes. Yeah. And then he likes to cook. He likes to get these sun basket or plated meals, which 
I swear, they need there needs to be a new box meal that has fewer ingredients and dishes it's just like one yeah. pot i think there probably is i'm sure but i'm like why do we need seven dishes seven pots and pans to make a freaking salad i don't True. understand that is excessive <laughs> to me and then i'm sitting there doing the dishes right, all right. salty <laughs> yeah, yeah. but i can't get too mad because i was like well uh he did make me he did make me a really lovely right. salad yeah so we do split it up uh -huh. and i and that must be why my relationship works there you go. now Going i know strong. thank you esquire.com <laughs> yeah. for that useful information on relationship success so we're going to take a quick break when we come back monique debose is going to be here to talk about interracial relationships and also her brand new one woman show mulatto math summing up the race equation in america don't be afraid y'all stick around with us because it's going to get deep right after this whether you're single or in a relationship one thing that you need to feel is sexy and i know just as well as anyone that when you're carrying around a few extra pounds sexy is the last thing that you feel right when you feel good about your body, others will feel good about being with you. So let me guess a couple of your excuses for working out and getting in shape. Let's see. Number one, you hate sweaty, stinky gyms. Number two, you don't have any cute workout clothes to wear. Mm -hmm. Number three, you don't have time to work out. Now, I'm going to blow all of those excuses out of the water when I tell you that you can get fit on your schedule, wearing whatever the heck you want in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> you, my friend, need to try Beachbody On Demand. And now fans of Dates and Mates can get all the Beachbody programs for 99 bucks a year, 30 days risk-free. You can stream all of Beachbody's fitness programs and get the nutritional guides on 21 Day Fix, Pio, Insanity, uh, TP. 25, P90X, P90X3, and more. I've been actually doing P90X3 myself, and I love the 30-minute format. It's so quick, and I know you've got 30 minutes, so you owe it to yourself to try the entire Beachbody On Demand system completely risk-free. Just click the link in the show notes or go to datesandmates.com and click the Beachbody banner to get started. Welcome back to Dates and Mates. I'm your host, Damona Hoffman, here in studio with a very, very dear friend of mine. And I've been excited about having her on the show for a while. And now we have something that we had to talk about because she has a new show called Mulatto Math, Summing Up the Race Equation in America. I got to see a little sneak preview of it <laughs> when right. she was uh, developing the show. And now I have my tickets oh, good. for an upcoming show. But you can see it. Uh, I'll tell you all about it. It's, it's, it's here in L.A., but there's so much more to this woman. She is an award-winning, multi-talented playwright, jazz, R&B, pop singer, and songwriter. Uh, she has a third album coming out, The Sovereign One. It's going to be released in the fall of this year. You can get it on pre-order, though, right now. And she, can I can I also say, you're also a coach. Yeah, sure. She's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, part of what yes, I do. she has studied spiritual psychology, and she's a coach, and she is one of my dearest friends and the only person, the only person that I wanted to bring to you today to talk about interracial, inter, I, see, I did it again, interracial <laughs> relationships. A strike two, Do you think I'm, no, let's, <laughs> let's analyze me because yeah. she's also a vocal coach. I've done some very powerful vocal coaching with Monique. And um, maybe there's something that's making me stumble over that word mm -hmm. because it is a little bit of a sticky word. So first, before she analyzes me, please give big smooches to Monique DeBose. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here on your show. You are so funny. Analyze me. Why do I keep tripping over the word interracial? I don't want to sweep it under the rug like Let's we've been doing for <laughs> decades. Um, it's a big word, one. <laughs> one. But, it means, <laughs> but it brings up so much for so many of us as mm -hmm. well. Because the, I mean, we are going to go right down into it. The history of our country is not built on ponies and rainbows and ice cream cones <laughs> in terms of the, you know, interrelating between the different races. And then we can also have a conversation about are there really different races? But I've stopped using that word, actually. Really? I don't like using the word race because we're all the human race. And I, exactly. feel, I feel a little bit sunshine and rainbows and ice cream cones when I say that. But it's I really true. believe it. It's just like. 
we're just different cultures and skin tones. That's it's exactly right. Whatever. But the thing in this country, I feel like, is that we don't. You are you are a trailblazer in that in terms of our country, because well, in the sense that a lot of people see race and see color and see that as a difference. Here's why I'm a trailblazer, though, uh, and I will I will accept and affirm that <laughs> I, I'm a trailblazer because my parents were trailblazers and as they, were mine. Right. And they got together when it really wasn't as accepted. So your background, you have a black father and you have a uh, African-American dad. Irish American mother. Right. So my dad from the segregated South, Wilmington, North Carolina. I didn't even know there was a beach in Wilmington when I was a young child visiting my grandparents because my granddaddy used to drive us all the way down to South Carolina. Because back in their times, you couldn't go black to that people beach. weren't allowed to use that beach in Wilmington. But I didn't know as a young child that it was on the coast. So he comes from uh, an area that where segregation is, uh, the roots run deep. Very deep. How does he end up <laughs> meeting and marrying a, 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 an Irish American woman. Well, first thing I have to give a big shout out to both my parents. They are they are trailblazers in their own right. Not only for what they did, but who they are as people. Um, I think my dad was always wanting something more. I think he knew that in his in his core, life had so much more to offer than what the segregated South had to offer him. And then I think my mom as well. I mean, just being a woman back in the fifties was a different experience in being a woman today and she was somebody who wanted adventure and so they met in the peace corps they were the uh -huh. first integrated cohort in the peace corps Ooh. So they met in 1969, and the first thing he noticed was her legs. <laughs> <laughs> but they went on to be, you know, they're still married today over 40-some years. So, And they're adorable. I've they are pretty them. cute. They're very adorable. And I'm curious to know how then you define yourself, because I feel like there's a lot of discussion around. Like, for example, I'm also biracial. I, I write for BET. Mm-hmm. And people are like, oh, so are you black now? And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm black. <laughs> but I also used to write for J-Date. And I'm also <laughs> Jewish. And they're like, so wait, which one are you? Everybody wants to put you in a category. And yeah. I'm like, well, I'm here's how I define. I'm biracial. Mm -hmm. But at times when I'm in an environment that is black, I feel black. Mm -hmm. And that is a part of my heritage that I accept and acknowledge and am proud of. Mm -hmm. And at times I feel white or jewish mm -hmm. and it's not like i'm not trying to i'm not trying to like be one or let one go you know, or, or yeah. i i just i really define equally as both but i know other people who are biracial who define themselves more who align more closely with one or the other culture that's so funny because for me i think yeah for me i identify and I don't say biracial. I don't like that word at all. I say mixed race. And that's so funny. There's the race word again. But that's the one I've always just used. So, um, But I also identify as African-American at times. And I've never identified as Irish-American. That's really interesting, too. I don't know if it's more the historical, like, ethnic culture of Judaism. Maybe. Perhaps. Yeah. I mean, th there's an element, too, of how, so how people perceive you. Yeah. So, so I can kind of like I could kind of hang with the Jews, you know, with the curly hair and everything. And I can say the prayers and all that. But like, I don't know that I could hang with hi Irish people like right. that might be <laughs> that might be a little bit of a stretch. Um, uh, what I'm moving towards is I am a powerful, delicious woman. Hey, that's what I hear at. that producer Thomas. I hear it. <laughs> so delicious. and I can live in many worlds mm -hmm. and I like that I can live in many worlds because there's so much deliciousness in all the worlds. So, yay. well, let's let's talk about how you further um, further mixed up the pot. You also <laughs> are married yes. with two beautiful boys and your husband is not just white, not just Jewish, but is also um, British. <laughs> right. So how is that in your home when you're mixing all of the cultures? How do your kids, how, do, do you have a definition for who your kids are? Do you look at them as as mixed race? Do you look at them as... I look at them as mixed race, but it does mixed race with extra, <laughs> with, with <laughs> a extra. little bit extra on it uh, because they are half English. But the thing is, they're being raised in the United States. So they do have access to their English family and we go visit England once or twice a year. So we got all that going on. So they're aware of that culture and that part of themselves. But I often talk to them, you know, you're Irish American, you're African American, you're Jewish, you're American, you're English. Like we just 
I said, and I, I always celebrate how awesome you are all these things and you get to live in all these worlds. We all do, but there's something nice about having pieces of it in you, in your everyday, that you get to go live in all these worlds too. Yes, I think we can have the impression that we're living in different worlds. Right. But I also wonder how other people perceive us when you're, you know, you can go into the world, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're accepted into it. And even when we're looking at American history, you know, the one drop rule, you have one drop black blood, you're black. Right. And that's how people define you. Do you feel like it's shifting in today's society? I don't know that it's shifting. I don't know that it, I think we just have more, there's more wiggle room and there's more flexibility to be all that you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Versus, because I mean, I'd still, I still hear the one drop rule in my mind. Like my kids are a quarter African-American, but in my mind, they're also black. They're black kids. I kind of feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Although I I think we've talked about this before (laughs) offline, but um, my husband thinks of our kids as white. Yeah. And he's like, well, they're three quarters white. <laughs> I'm like, well, they're one quarter black. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so like, don't deny me. <laughs> well, what's so interesting with the show Mulatto Math, I always have a talk back afterwards and people are coming out of the woodwork. It's so beautiful mm-hmm. because people are so hungry to have these kinds of conversations because yeah. there are people who are, you know, growing up like your kids and growing up like my kids. And they're saying, well, we haven't really talked about it do you think their kids are thinking about it? And they're talking about 12 and 13 year old kids. I'm like, they're absolutely aware of it. And I think if you don't speak it, then if they're feeling something about it, then they might be thinking, Oh, I shouldn't be thinking about like it just right. Bringing it all out into the open, I think is the best way to go about it. I'm going to read a little review of your show. It's something that, that struck me from it. Um, They said, Monique DeBose has the courage to ask questions that surely deserve our attention. And in a way that, is far beyond blame or judgment, which is a very good place to begin. Yeah. I often get questions on this show from people who are dating for the first time outside of their quote race. Sure. And they are being met with judgment from their parents where they're like, don't bring that person home. They are not welcome here. Like you can be friends with whomever, or I accept someone of a different, different race. Sure. But not in my family. And I'm, and I'm hearing this from both sides. It's not just white parents that aren't accepting of their child bringing home someone who's African-American. Sure. I do hear it from the African-American community. Absolutely. Like, oh, well, you couldn't find somebody who was who was black. And so now you're you're dating a white person. What do you say to those people that are carrying still they're open to it, but they're still carrying that blame and judgment from past generations with them? Are you talking about what do I say to the people who are actually doing the dating? Yeah. Yeah. How do they navigate this world when one generation is 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 not so woke? <laughs> the thought I had that cracked me up was like, you know, generations move on. So people will They'll just leave the earth at some they point. They will just eventually die. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that it. That was the first thought. But no. the no. second thought is, you know, everything takes time. Like we are all often facing things that we're scared of and we react to things when we're scared we're trying to survive and it's not rational so if we have that in our consciousness the people who are dating they can always bring that conversation to their family and over time Hmm. families just get over it i mean have a baby no i'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) babies always make it easier um people get over it. I mean, the mo- I mean, research shows the more time you spend with people who are perceived to be different than you, then you are more willing to be accepting of them. Right. And the more you see them as your equal, as another human being, but maybe with a different skin hue. That's it. It does require some courage from that person, though, to, to be willing to stand with their partner yep. and possibly stand up to their their parents and just peer pressure even too. I'm mm-hmm. you just making me think about me I'm 40 years old and I got married over 10 years ago so it's not I mean it's very it's very recent we're in the 2000s that I got married and I still had issues having to like I felt like oh my god I'm, I'm bringing this white man into my world really yeah he was the only second he's the second white person I'd ever dated so just in terms of like peers and culture and friends were not saying, Monique, what are you doing with this white man? Nobody said that, but it was, there was something in it's me. A sub sort of yeah, subconscious that I didn't even feeling. know I was 
dealing with. So our relationship started off kind of rocky because I wasn't ready to just be like, this is who I've chosen. This is who I am. If you don't mind sharing about your relationship a little bit. What would you like to know? (laughs) Because you also, you began your relationship very quickly. You had been in a workshop and within, was it 10 days? 10 days. Within 10 days you were engaged. Yes. And so you were getting to know each other. Absolutely. As you were basically marrying and it was an arranged marriage. Yeah. Uh, By, I'm going to say by the universe. I don't know. Um, Yeah. We met and there was something about him and something about me for him that just connected. And it wasn't the everyday like, oh, we both like to play tennis or, oh, we both like this. We both like going to concerts. It wasn't (laughs) on that level. It was just like, I don't even, I didn't even know if he went to college. So I don't know, I'm not recommending this for <laughs> your your listenership, but um, there was something about him that just felt like I need to be with him and same for him. And we- I am recommending this actually oh, for okay. my listeners because you spoke something that I, ha- I do talk about. It's not about what kind of activities you enjoy. It's about what is the, what is the content of this person's character? Yeah. Like what, um, to borrow from <laughs> the great, the great Martin Luther King, um, what is this person about? What value system do they have? And I know through the workshop you did, you got really deep into that very yeah. quickly. And then the other stuff didn't matter. Like we're sitting here with online dating, checking boxes like, oh, well, he has to go to college and he has mm. to make this much money. And, he ha- and it's like, does that even really matter? How does he live his life and what does he believe in the world? That is a really good point. Yeah. So go on. So you you really... There's uh, what I realized looking back now, I have two boys, like you said, they are six and four. And when I picked my partner, I wasn't conscious of it, but something inside my body was conscious. Like he would make an amazing father. He would be somebody who I could traverse life with and feel safe with. And he is, he is somebody who I knew would be responsible. Um, he had a good sense of humor, um, he was obviously adventurous because I met him. I met him on a course about sensuality and relationship and communication. So if I went to a course about <laughs> sensuality and relationship and I was single and I didn't meet someone, I'd ask for my money back personally. So I'm glad I that worked no out for you. I had no intention of meeting somebody. <laughs> I was just at this sex- <laughs> sensuality <laughs> course, you know. I was exploring my womanhood and all of a sudden I met this person. Yeah. And he was clear he was never going to be married. Like he was, he was clear about that. And then we met and it was like, oh. Okay, maybe. Except for to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I just knew there were qualities about him that maybe 10 years ago I didn't see as so valuable. And looking back now, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Like th- I picked a great partner mm-hmm. because I can really live life with this person. Are there things that you feel like your parents had to navigate? I think I know the answer to this. But being in a, quote, interracial relationship – that now with you in a interracial relationship, you are there parallels or are there are there differences that you are recognizing in how your relationship unfolds? There are both. I yeah. mean, I see some things where I'm like, oh, my God, I get why I picked him or I understand my dad more. And then there are things where I'm just like, that is old school. I don't even want to like I don't deal with that in this day and age. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's both. It's pretty it's yeah it's both it's both it's a very courageous show and um there there's a lot that you reveal about your own history and then there are a lot of questions as the review says that you raise for other people to really go inside and examine um their own deep dark thoughts about about race and i wanted to ask you why now why are you telling this story now well on a personal level, I could not not tell this story at this point. I mean, I won't go into details, but the universe made it very clear to me mm-hmm. that if I want to stay on this planet, I need to tell this story. So I'll just say it, leave it like that. Um, and then it's just, it feels like everything is coming together at the perfect time. I mean, we look at our political culture. We've just had an African American president for eight years. And um, now we have Donald Trump as the president. And it's just, there are so much. I mean, it's we've gone from one sw- edge of the pendulum to the next in many people's perceptions. And 
it's like it's all coming up now like why not now we cannot keep doing it the way we've been doing it which is not talking about race not talking about what our thoughts are not acknowledging what's real for us doesn't mean it has to be like <laughs> rainbows and unicorns but mm -hmm. it's like if we can create a forum where people can share what's real for them without people feeling attacked or judged like I love that that review said beyond judgment mm -hmm. that's awesome because I'm doing what I plan to do then I just want to make a space so that people can start talking about stuff because as a country I mean I feel like there's I think racism and uh, ignorance around I relating to people who we deem as other without respect is it's it's hurting us I mean it literally is I would say a cancer mm. to our country yeah I certainly Let's feel it feel the divide more than I have in in many years and I, I appreciate that you're bringing the conversation to the forefront I know I didn't really prep you for this but <laughs> you have such a beautiful voice and I hope to have you back on the show to do some of the work that you do with with voice mm -hmm. and it's just so powerful how you can really really zing into a person's heart and their core through using the voice mm -hmm. and it's something I talk about on dates and in relationships and how to use your voice as a tool and we'll talk about that okay. maybe on another, another show. show but I would love for people to just hear a little taste of your voice because the the show is um, it weaves in your music you are a, a singer and songwriter yeah it weaves your music in through your stories and it does such a beautiful job of expressing those moments that that are sort of sticky and letting people uh, walk with you through the experience yeah can you share a little song with us yeah uh, one of the songs um, I'll, I'll do one of the ones from the top or a little piece of it um, this is actually about my experiences as a mixed race or biracial or multicultural human being. Um, it starts with collision of worlds breeze this beautiful girl division of mind bridge to that sweet sublime anchor deep so deep deeper than that hollow tree and thrust so high, caught between the earth and sky. Brown beauty. There she is. That's amazing. Yay. Yeah. Do we have any pl applause? <laughs> Thank Yay. you. Thank you no, so much. No, you have such a beautiful, <laughs> deep, soulful voice, and I just really wanted everyone to hear it. Because you also have this new album coming That's and right. people can pre-order it yes. so if you like what you heard and I know you did get yourself a pre-ordered copy um, tell us a, a little bit about the album sure the album is called The Sovereign One it was also written in tandem with the show it's so funny the music from the album is not music from the show but this album is about a woman owning all of herself like mm -hmm. really exploring what it means to be married, what it what is monogamy, and what does it mean to be from two different cultures, and how do you bring all that together, and how do you own yourself? So the reason I want to ask people to pre-order is because I want it to chart on iTunes, mm -hmm. and the only way it can chart on iTunes is if it has, on its first day when it's actually released, it has a ton of sales. So the pre-order is a way to get that to happen. And it's $5? It's like five or six bucks. Oh, my gosh. Okay, do it, y'all. It's uh, You can pre-order at MoniqueDeBoseMusic.com, and I'll spell that out for you. That's M-O-N-I-Q-U-E-D-E-B-O-S-E Music.com. And if you're in L.A., get yourself some tickets to see Mulatto Math summing up the race equation in America. By the way, um, she's not going to brag about it, but I'm going to brag for her. Y she sold out the last two shows. Oh, yeah. So, like, don't sit around and be like, oh, I should see that show. Like, if you want to go, get the tickets and and book them now because it, it will sell out. And it's only a seven sh show run, six show six run. Six show run. Yep. So, yeah, that's two shows down. So that's four more shows. Get your <laughs> tickets, y'all, at MulattoMath.com. That's spelled M U L. A T T O M A T H dot com. If you don't know how to spell math, please, <laughs> <laughs> please, y'all. So I love your insights, and we get questions every week from our listeners and from Great. our partner app at Techspert. So let's move on into technically dating. Technically dating. I love how like she perked up yeah. at the intro. <laughs> yeah. but the it's the sound. She's yeah. so tuned to the sound. <laughs> 
tune into the sound of my voice now, Monique DeBose, because I have a question from a young lady who says she's been talking to this guy for six months and she's ready to be official. But she says he he's asked to give him some time. She says, we're, but what if we're already starting to act like a couple? I'm starting to lose patience and thinking of just doing my own thing because I'm tired of waiting. He his kids are an important part of his life, too. But I want to matter as well. Hmm. What do we say to this this gal who is dating a man who has kids and they are a priority, but she doesn't feel like a priority to, to him. And it's been six months and she doesn't have her official pin yet. <laughs> is that I, I'm just curious. It's not she's not wearing his letter jacket. <laughs> what is her intention and what does she actually want? Well, we don't know all of this. Oh, well, I mean, that's it. Well, OK, so. I mean, it sounds like from this, her intention is to like I'm at your least be. In I'm your wife now. Like she just wants him to be, to, to claim her, her. Got claim it. her. So you know, this is not going to be a fun answer. I uh, just my answer is how are how where are the places that you're not claiming yourself? Do you see? I told you that she was deep. <laughs> yeah. Spiritual psychology yeah. right here, <laughs> dropping that knowledge on you. I mean, seriously, that to me feels like the first thing, like take him out of the equation and where are you not claiming yourself and just start with that piece and whatever comes forward that's information for you around what you can continue to do for you and you're so wise well you give that you're the dating expert well i'm just looking at the i you know i like the data mm -hmm. i'm looking at the statistics of six months usually most people if they've been dating six months are ready to at least acknowledge that they're not dating someone else and claim you as a girlfriend mm -hmm. so i would say in that period of time if by six months he has not made the move and you've talked about it, it sounds like she's she's made the the uh she started the conversation and he says, well, you need to give me some time. How much time? Does he's he just need? he's still got too many things on the back burner. It sounds like he's keeping too many pots simmering. Yeah. And <laughs> look, the kids might be a factor like maybe <laughs> me. I don't know how long it's been mm -hmm. since he was not with his children's mother. mother. But you have to consider maybe he's really just not ready for a relationship and don't internalize that and be like, well, something is wrong with me. Do what Monique said. Go a little deeper and and look at your your own value for yourself and see if this is a relationship that you want to keep investing in if you're not getting back what you need. That's all. And that's stay all in communication with him, I think. That's probably really great, too. Let him know what you're really feeling. Because I think sometimes I've seen friends, too, where they're just, you know, I really want this. And they tell good girlfriends everything, but they're trying to present something to this person, which is not the whole truth. What do you say mm -hmm. about that dating expert? Like, would you tell him, hey, look, this is really where I'm headed. This is what I'm looking for. Yeah. I think a lot of people are afraid to acknowledge that because yeah. the answer they get might be no. Yeah. But relationship requires risk. And you have to be willing to be honest and open and sp speak on what you need. Mm -hmm. And then accept that the answer may be yes and the answer may be no. But the no is a blessing because then you have the information to go and and move forward in your life one way or another right get the inf don't be afraid of the information <laughs> yeah i know it's easier that said is than hard done. yeah but that it's is six hard. i mean six <laughs> months it's not like it's not like she's 10 years deep with two kids with him you know that's right. a different that's a whole different ball game that you and i know something yes. about yes okay 28 year old woman from Arizona says I'm in love with a childhood friend Ooh. currently I'm in a bad relationship with two kids my childhood crush is on his second child with his girlfriend we both liked each other and he admitted to my grandmother he always thought we would end up together I want to be with him but we're both in relationships what do I do I'm tempted to message this guy's brother but I don't want to mess up this man's current relationship since kids are involved what do i do do i let him know how i feel <sighs> this is so messy <laughs> this is so messy i really want to hear your answer on really? this i do because i want to hear your answer well, but let me I'll, hear yours and then I'll, I'll, I'll share mine uh yeah this is really messy so she needs to figure out the status of her current relationship with before she even thinks about jumping to this other guy if she's not happy in the current relationship that she's in she needs to either a figure out a way to fix it or b figuring out figure out a way to to move on from it mm -hmm. before she can even 
think about whether she wants to be with this guy. And we tend to romanticize these past relationships or, you know, past connections. Yeah. And especially for a childhood crush or friend where there's that nostalgia factor connected to it. When she's in a relationship that she's not happy about, she's having all of these thoughts and fantasies about what could be How great with this it would person. Be. Yeah. Yeah. And if you just jump from one to the next without doing that that work to really evaluate where you are in your current relationship and what you need in in a relationship going forward, it's going to be more than likely the same thing and repeating the same same patterns. It's not the necessarily the relationship that's making you unhappy. Mm. It's something that you need to make whole within yourself. Yes. I think your answer was brilliant. I know, but I don't have a master's in spiritual psychology. You don't need so. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just reminded me of uh, my sister's childhood friends. We all went to elementary school together. They were childhood crush friends. So this may be good or not good for her in Arizona. They were childhood crush friends or childhood crushes. And then they went off to college and had their own lives. He ended up having a relationship and had a child. Uh, and they ended up coming back together. And they are the happiest human beings and they have three additional children. So now they have four that. children total. But there was no home wrecking involved, right? There was no home wrecking. Because <laughs> he and the woman he had the first child with split. Yeah. But yeah, you've got to wait until the timing is right. Yeah. And she needs to deal with the relationship in hand. And by the way, if she's going to express to him how she feels, don't do it through his brother. Why are you <laughs> yeah, making it so strange. complicated? Yeah. No, but I feel like nobody wants to talk to the person that they're wanting to talk to anymore. Well, the rationale could be she said she didn't want to, like, get into the guy's space, but maybe she could tell the brother and the brother might be like, oh, my God, he's been talking about you forever. I know. Or he it's, could be like, oh, girl, get get over it. He is happy and in love. Or so. he could just not even know and <laughs> send you true. on the wrong path. <laughs> That's a good point. Oh, it sounds real messy. Don't make it so messy, girl. Just, uh, you know, deal with the situation that you're in right now. 28 from Arizona. OK, this is a gal. She's 18. Oh, oh, you're a mom. I want to hear your opinion on this. Okay. She says, is it bad if I'm 18 and I want to spend the night with my boyfriend? I asked my mom and she said, no, that it's not right. But I don't see how. About a month ago, I told her that me and him were ready and I wanted to get on the pill. And she agreed that that was smart. And she even told me that that she was proud I felt comfortable to tell her this. So now I've been on the pill a little over a month, and she's telling me that it's not right for me to go over there. It's just frustrating because I came to her about this for mm. a reason. Yeah. So she kind of, very mature of her, kind <clears throat> of laid the groundwork of like, Mom, I'm 18, I'm making this decision. And Mom is saying, mm-mm, not in my house, not in his mama's house, mm-mm. Well... 18 year old I really hear you and I love that you are being so responsible and taking care of you know very clear of what you want from the relationship which it sounds like it's not children which is great so you're handling that <laughs> right um, and I love that you uh, felt comfortable to talk to your mother and really have her, have her get on board with supporting you and it sounds like um, it sounds like it's really hard. Like as a mother, I mean, I, my kids are four and six, so I'm not where your mom is at. But it's hard to let your children go. And I feel like if you just stay in the conversation with your mom about it, she will probably sooner than later um, make space for it. But maybe what you could do is really talk with your mom about how responsible you are and he is about what your intentions are about not having children. Um, and also letting your mom know that perhaps you are or just acknowledging it's scary. Like I could imagine, mom, it's probably really scary having your almost or adult daughter want to like legally adult yes, daughter want to, you know, explore a sex life with your boyfriend. Even feels edgy saying that on the radio. But oh this is God. dates and mates. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just letting your mom know that you see how challenging and scary it is. And letting her know that you'd be really that you're really being responsible and mindful about the whole thing, and maybe asking your mom what are some of the things that are really having you say no, like so we can talk about those. Because because maybe mom, I didn't consider everything. Just letting your mom know that you trust her and respect her, and that you acknowledge what she's feeling. Yeah, that's my. That's advice. good. I, I I like saying 
acknowledge your mom's feelings. I think everyone wants to just know that their point of view is being heard. Yeah. Like she's frustrated because she feels like her mom didn't really hear her when yeah. she said, I'm coming to you because I need birth control. And so she needs to have the same sort of consideration for her mom. But at the same time, look, girl, you 18, you go live your life. <laughs> like, it's not up to her mom to put those rules. I understand she might be 18 and still a senior maybe in high school. Yeah, maybe but she's still in the house. Yeah. If you're making, not just being on the pill, but, you know, I feel like you make sure just because you're he's 18 too or around your age doesn't mean that he has not been exposed to any STIs. Make right. sure you guys get tested and maybe listen to your mom about ways to be to be responsible or things that you haven't thought about. But in terms of exploring your sexuality, I think this is an appropriate time. It's she's yeah. not 15. Yeah, she's 18. She's an adult. And maybe she can use the strategy that I use to get my first tattoo because I wanted to get a tattoo <laughs> when I was 17. Um, I think my mom might be listening and she's <laughs> she just passed out. Yeah. But um, <laughs> anyways, I was 17 and I was like, I want to get a tattoo. And my mom was like, no, no, I was 16. And she was like, no way, no way tattoo. And I said, well, how about this? I'm going to get one when I'm 18, one way or another. I'd rather get it now with your consent than at 18 behind your back. Damn. And she was like, talk to me about it in a year. And I was like, okay. So I waited patiently a year. And then I came back to her and I said, look, I thought about it. I still want it. I considered what you, what you yeah. said. And I, I'd like for you to come with me and consent for me to get it. And we can go and check out, I'll, I'll make, make sure, sure it's, it's safe, safe and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. So you can feel okay about it. So she, she let me get it. She sat there in the corner the whole time His being arms like, crossed. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you it was going to hurt. I told you it was a bad idea, but uh, it's now mm, mm, a few years yeah. later. It's a couple. It's a few years later and I still feel good with my decision. And I, and I feel better that I respected my mom's yeah. wishes. What was well. it of? And when where like is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where is it? That is a secret for another uh. day. Maybe I'll show it on Instagram sometime, but not yet. Okay. Uh, real quick. Real quick question. No. Pr yes? You gotta, yeah, it's got to be a quick one. Super quick. Is it? Okay, wait. Okay. Texting question. Do you think it's okay to double text sometimes when you know the other person is probably busy? <laughs> do sometimes sometimes do people forget to text and just need a reminder? This is from a 34 year old from Illinois. Can you double text people? Yes, but people you're, you're dating. Uh, yes, it, yes, yes. <laughs> you should see my face. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what's your intention with the double text? I, I'm always about intention. What is your intention? The intention is to get that person's attention. Well, is it to get that person's <laughs> attention or is it to say, hey, pay, uh, hey, what are you doing? I'm trying to like shift what's going on in your world. Oh, gosh. I don't know that they're even thinking that deep. <laughs> yeah. You're just. <sighs> All right. Let me lighten it up. <laughs> yes. It's yes. okay to double text. I I miss text all the time. I, I forget do too. to respond and everything. Yesterday I, I had forty text. five texts. Get out! I had forty five texts yesterday, and I hadn't. I didn't have time to look at them. So it's possible. I feel so honored that you looked at my text. I, I <laughs> tend to believe people that want to respond to you will, but a double text is probably okay. Not the triple text. If you got a Not triple text, you gotta cut it off. Yeah, yeah. the exactly. three strikes and yeah, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Not everybody's a good communicator, but you're an excellent communicator Thank here, you. Monique Debose. And so I would like to ask you a few questions that I like to ask my guests. And there's no wrong answer, oh but boy. I sometimes feel like the best advice is whatever comes off the top of your head, All your right. first instinct. Go. So it's been a while since we've done some dating dot, dot, dot. I'm just going to say a phrase. You fill in the blank. I was never a big dater, just so you know. Here we no, go. No, no, you can handle this. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Number one, blank is always sexy. Laughter. Oh, nice. we've never gotten that one. Yeah. Number two, blank is never sexy. Oh, bad attitude. Bad attitude. Bad attitude. A not bad attitude. <laughs> Number three, the biggest red profile on a dating profile. I don't even know what the that means. The biggest red flag <laughs> on a dating profile is. Oh, I, this isn't mine, but somebody said it, and I loved it. Uh, a man who takes pictures of his dog, and, like, his dog is his That's best a friend. a red flag? 
Girl, People I don't like do dogs. dating. I know, but if his dog, if he's, they were saying, if he's like 40 and he's still with his dog and his pictures, maybe that's not a good sign. Maybe if he's like mouth kissing his dog. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be weird. That'd get your attention though, yeah. for sure. Okay, number four. And I keep swiping. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest first date mistake is. I loved your advice. Going someplace else. Yeah. That's not the main like location. Mm-hmm. I thought that was great. Thank you. Yeah. Number five, the most important quality in a wife is. I don't know because I'm a, I'm not the best <laughs> wife. Um, no, don't say that. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm okay with that. My husband knows that. We've talked about it. Uh, <laughs> open communication. The best quality of a wife. That could be it. Open communication. Is op- yeah, someone who <laughs> communicates. Well, what is the most important no, quality? The best quality of a wife is a woman who is tapped into her sensuality. Ooh, see, she did that workshop. It hasn't turned off. (laughs) Okay, number six. This is where you can get your payback. The most important quality in a husband is for him to not take all the woman exploration and emotion so seriously. To not get hooked by (laughs) it. To not get hooked by it. We do get a little cray cray. Baby, I hear you. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. That's what Seth does. But sometimes I think he doesn't hear me. And then you're like, (laughs) you're not. But I'm like, that's how we stay married because. he knows what to what to, what to just zone yeah, out on and just be on. like, mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Monique, <laughs> you are amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much for gracing us with your insight and your presence and your beautiful voice. People can get the their pre-ordered copy. Yes. It'll be out in the fall, but pre-order because we want her to go to number one on iTunes charts. There is a single that is available as soon as you pre-order it, too. So you can listen to the first there single of the album. I'm going to get it right now at MoniqueDeBoseMusic.com, spelled M-O-N-I-Q-U-E-D-E-B-O-S-E, music.com. And also, Mulatto Math is playing in L.A. Can I say the dates? Sure. It's this Sunday, April 8th, and then we have April 22nd, April 29th, and then May 6th we close, which Demona will... I will be, be there. At. Oh, hey. Sorry, I was like, oh, she's going to We can do a little life. meet and greet. We can do yeah. a little talk back. <laughs> um, you can get those tickets at mulattomath.com. Thank you so much for joining us on another lively episode of Dates and Mates. Join in the discussion. I'm sure there will be more posts on my Facebook and Instagram this week about interracial relationships. I want you to be in the conversation. You can find me on all the socials at Demona Hoffman and you can pick up your 30-day risk-free membership to Beachbody On Demand. Just click the banner on datesandmates.com or the link in the show notes to get that. And thank you again to our friends at Techspert for the amazing questions. We have a special guest joining us next week to talk about millennial dating trends. But until then, I wish you happy dating. <laughs>